We know that e-mountain biking is about adventures and getting out there, discovering the natural world and having fun. But what happens when you're thrown into the unknown against the clock? When adventure turns into a competition? To find out, we headed to the moorland wilderness of Dartmoor for a presenter challenge. Is there a difference? <laughs> Covering almost a thousand kilometres square, Dartmoor is without doubt one of the granite honeypots of the UK. Why do we love granite so much? Well, its coarseness means it is said to have insane grip qualities. Bristly stuff tearing your tyres apart but keeping you glued. Today then, two all-action 140mm travel trail bikes and you guessed two riders take on a challenge of navigating their way around this wild landscape, taking in the finest single track, the toughest tech, but avoiding the pixies, the headless horsemen, and somehow, just somehow, getting across those stepping stones. Today's challenge then, apart from enjoying this amazing landscape, is to navigate ourselves to a series of checkpoints. No, you don't have to get to each checkpoint, but some checkpoints do have more weight and therefore more points. So it is a game of strategy and also the first team back to here, the cafe, gets maximum points for the fastest time. But we've actually yet to know what the checkpoints are. Oh, right. See that slick production there? Right, what we got? Uh, okay, two o'clock. It says the route's about five hours. Obviously, we've got 630 watt hours of battery. Um, how far is it, Chris? Looking, by my estimation, about 26 miles, Steve. Big day out. Ooh, crikey. That's gonna be, yeah, we need to be careful on the, on the, uh, on the mode, don't we? Yeah, definitely. The Dartmoor Dozen are 12 carefully selected checkpoints along this arduous journey. Some checkpoints, like the Old Duchy and the Crazy Pool, are one-shot wonders, whereas others, like a bridleway or the Dartmoor Ponies, are a case of choosing from a handful. Some checkpoints are easier to get to than others, while some offer a more lucrative point reward for finding them. The bikes to take us on this incredible journey are a brace of bikes from Merida. Naturally, I have the high-end version, and Steve, you've got the budget bike. Yes, naturally. But Chris, it's hardly budget at £5,000. But yes, Merida have actually provided us with a brace of E140s to unlock this Sherlock Holmes jigsaw, sorry, challenge. Um, do you know what? I've not actually spent much time on 140 bikes before. It's gonna be a good day out. And so we left the predictability and safety of Yelverton and ventured into the unknown. Ben and myself were taking the clockwise route whilst Chris and Josh were going anti-clockwise. Now, the reason for this was quite simple at the time, but in all the excitement to get out of town, we kind of forgot and simply cracked on. Okay, so it's uh, a search for, the more tours we get, the more points we get. So we've already been on the accelerator, but uh, there's a tour there for sure, a rocky one. Some points to begin. Whoa. Now one of the checkpoints on the list is a classic Dartmoor Ford crossing. Now I found one, but unfortunately due to the amount of rain we've had these past few weeks, this one is definitely not gonna be conquered by an e-bike. Maybe if I had a rubber dinghy in my backpack, we could sail across or maybe put a snorkel on. But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go round this one. Chris, meanwhile, reaches his first checkpoint shortly after his first bacon roll. One Ford crossing, lots of rain, and at the start of the ride seems no place to wade in. Does he get the points? Not a chance. Merida E140 comes in a range of specifications in both alloy and carbon front triangle options. 
All bikes have the new Shimano EP8 motor and larger capacity 630 watt hour batteries. The bikes start at £3,800 for the 400 model, £5,200 for the 700 which I'm riding and upwards in price. There are three sizes, medium, large and extra large. The E140s are lightweight all mountain style EMTVs and come with mixed wheel size 29 inch up front enabling improved rollover through technical ground and 27.5 inch rear for durability and cornering performance. Most models also come with integrated lights, mud guards and toolkit. Yeah, we need to get a move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're getting totally distracted. Uh, okay, so next on the list is uh, a megalithic monument. Um, so I suggest we get a couple of tours for some bonus points. Maybe a, an odd bit of uh, rock action on the on the EPA motor and uh, and crack on to this Conan Doyle location, which we should be at in. Ooh, 15 minutes? It's going to be more like two hours. Now I've just come across this section of moorland and I've stumbled across a nugget of information, literally a nugget on the floor, as to one of our next checkpoints is to try and get as close as possible to an animal out on Dartmoor. One of those is being a sheep. Now Steve obviously has that hometown advantage, but I'm a little less practice, so I can see one up ahead. Within minutes, Chris gets a second checkpoint nailed. Dartmoor sheep, more controversy though. Are these Dartmoor sheep or simply sheep on Dartmoor? Whatever, it's Chris's chance to get acquainted with the locals. We also get a Dartmoor sheep dialed in, so to speak, but are certainly not ticking off the list as swiftly as Chris and Josh. But what we are doing is riding one of the finest pieces of bridleway on Dartmoor. It's rocky, it's lurid green, and it's utterly mesmerizing. So much so that we forget about the checkpoints and the time. The strategies of each team, however, also seem to go in quite the opposite directions at first too. Whilst me and Ben went in search of shredding trails, the odd sheep and a super fast time, planning to get that early afternoon coffee, Chris and Josh were keen to bag the points, which, to be fair, began with good intentions. Out on the moors, it's a good thing we've both got big batteries, as all around the ground is very waterlogged. Still, Chris really has the bit between his teeth, and so it is he sees a pony on the horizon, stretching it a bit to claim as a checkpoint for sure, and so too his idea of a river source, which to me looks more like a pile of horse wee. His fourth checkpoint, however, is in mine, and, well, he's surely got points in the bag there. Meanwhile, we miss our megalithic monument, one of the finest on Dartmoor, but did get a chance for some Ministry of Defence details. By this point, we were curious as to the whereabouts of the boys, and were thinking a meet-up would be imminent. I think, I think Josh is going to be cross with me. Uh, there's no way we're going to be getting back with our coffee at Dartmoor Cafe for two o'clock. Uh, it's quite a long way across this moorland. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I might be running, I'm going to run out of battery, so I'm going to need to be super careful uh, across this next moorland. I mean, look at it, look at it. Chris's attempt to call checkpoint on ponies, which seem to be in the next county, is utter nonsense, but does get a checkpoint in the stones in a row. It looks like he's taking this really seriously, and is still on track, however, it really is taking a while, and gets to what he believed to be his seventh checkpoint, Tor 1, at Eastern Tor quite late into the morning, or should I say afternoon. 
We arrive at Princetown around about the same time. See that there? It's one king size point for us, that. That's the old duchy, which is where Conan Doyle stayed when he wrote The Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, interestingly, Baskervilles is, uh, Baskerville Hall is a house in Mid Wales and it is actually where I used to go nightclub in not so long ago. But anyhow, king size points. Now, Princetown is actually one of the key parts of the route because this is where a lot of the points are to be gained and certainly where a lot of the checkpoints are. Uh, I'm a bit concerned. We've been hanging about here now for a few minutes and uh, there's no sign of Chris and Josh yet. So uh, if we don't see them in the next half hour, I'm thinking they're going to be down on juice, which I am not. I'm only down one bar and we've done a considerable amount of riding. It's worth pointing out that uh, there's three uh, power, three assistance modes on this bike, Eco, Trail and Boost. You can actually customise each of those settings to, to, to give either, either lower or higher assistance in each of those modes. I've gone for the higher mode, so I'm surprised how well we've done so far, given the distance we've gone. Shortly after, we are now back onto the Boglands and after a skirmish with some locals, arrive at the Croc of Gold. Okay, just checking in on the Croc of Gold there. Croc of Gold, points for us. We've now nailed two legit points in the last hour, but only four for the day. Behind on points for sure, but how quickly are we covering ground compared to the boys? Eighth checkpoint for Chris is a tin mine. It's a big hole in the ground. Not sure if it's tin, but we'll give it to him anyway. His ninth checkpoint is a bridleway. Can't argue with that. <music> Meanwhile, we are now getting seriously worried about Chris and Josh. We've covered two thirds of the territory without any sign of them in the distance and no tire marks on the ground. It's a nice stream crossing. Woo. Looks pretty tasty this one. And it looks pretty darn deep. Let's have a look. Whoa. Definitely not going to be riding through this one. Now I think in the summer if you were to do this, you'd probably hop across these rocks, but I think I'm going to need a bit of a different approach on this one. Otherwise I am literally going to be up to my waist in water. Right, I'm going to go for the launch. You're going to chuck it gently non-drive side across to that side and hopefully jump myself. So sketchy on here. Right. <laughs> Whew, thank God for that, I didn't fall in. <laughs> We head to arguably the most important point accumulator of the trip. The stream crossing, sorry, the raging torrent of hell, would prove a big call. Get it right and you get the big points. Get it wrong, however, and the consequences would probably be game over, literally. So, naturally, I filled my boots. Emerging absolutely chilled and soaked, some points are bagged with a tin mine. And after that, a navigational blunder on the moors, we see Chris and Josh. They have now covered a third of the journey in four and a half hours. It's 2.30 p.m. in the middle of nowhere. I'm wondering if they've used all their battery because they're like really picking their way through there at like such a slow pace. Right, we're just approaching the halfway point across the moors and I can see a red jacket looming in the distance and I think that is the face of Steve Jones. With a quick exchange of pleasantries whilst trying not to give too much away, we passed each other and began the long, boggy return to Yelverton. Ready? That's the Ford ticked off, I think. Well, that's like sort of waist deep. Okay, sorry, Marida. So, I mean, sorry guys, but only one way you thought. Only one way for it. Oh. oh my God, do I do it? You have to chuck the bike. I'm not going to make that, am I? Not in a million years. I'm not going to make that. <laughs> oh my God, that's so deep. 
Right, so the route goes down here and apparently there's a bit of a river crossing. Ugh. Right, this here looks a little bit more tasty than a, a simple ford cross. And I can see there are some stepping stones there, just about, but they're about a foot underwater and that river is super fast flowing. So there's no way I'm gonna be going across there. I think I'm gonna to need to find an alternative route, maybe back up on the road, chop across, then do a bit of hiker bike possibly to conquer this. There's no way I'm going in there and there's no way that Steve Jones across this river. I can smell some foul play going on. Well, the update on the route is I'm still scratching my head why why they took so long to get to where they did i mean it's what have they been doing and the thing is they're meant to have come down here and there's no tracks on the on the bridleway which means they've gone the wrong way to get to here which i don't know i really don't know and i worry about them getting home on time Oh, if we get points, we're getting back first as well. Right, that's the plan. Let's try and get back the quickest. Yeah, let's do that. Crazy pool, stone rose, and a pony. Now I'm a little bit worried about the distinct lack of tire marks out across this part of the, uh, the moors. I can't actually see one, so I think Jonesy has somehow missed this section out. And I think we're gonna do the same because I looked on the map and this section is actually labeled as marshy ground. And as we've already experienced, marshy ground, even at the best time of year, is pretty much gonna be impassable on an e-bike, let alone with how much water we've had. So what we're gonna do is do a sneaky little cut through on the road and hopefully get ahead of Jonesy. No points at the stepping stones. They missed the crock of gold. The old duchy and running out of battery and time only have one option. It's bailout time, ironically from within yards of Dartmoor Prison. The road bike ride back to Yelverton is with one bar of battery left into a headwind, 10 tough miles. Ben and me, meanwhile, are way ahead on distance and have no idea that Chris and Josh are bailing. And so it is we decide to pile on the points and try to bag a good pony, remember more points for proximity, and the elusive crazy pool shot which the boys have missed, but which has, well, lots of points attached. Oh, hell, look. Stone circle. You know what that means, isn't it? King size. So it's really important if you fear that you're not going to get back uh, with enough juice is to scroll down through here and go to assist customize. Press that. And you've got profile one or profile two. So profile one uh, is a more powerful setting and profile two is less powerful. So I'm gonna put it into profile two and good to go. So we've been riding now for six hours. Me and Ben are pretty much at the end of our adventure. What is crazy that is that we met uh, Josh and Chris four and a quarter hours into our ride. And uh, I think it's amazing, you know, we, you can get that amount of riding on a 630 watt hour battery. Yes, we did use Eco and I did have to adjust it into the lowest power setting. What a route, Dartmoor delivered for sure. Uh, some tricky moments, some weary moments, some uh, toys out of the cart moments, but nevertheless, I mean that last cool, that last bridleway was good, right? It was good. So I think that's the cool thing about these adventures: is it you're making it up on your terms, so you're going where you want to go. So it's not like a trail centre where you've got way marks and surfaces, man-made surfaces, and berms and jumps, which are pretty predictable. Out here, you've got to actually get on with it as you work your way through the landscape. Great day out, time for coffee. I'm sure there's one there somewhere. Let's go. Oh my God, oh no, we've got a puncture. I can't believe it, cannot believe it. Right, pressure's on, they could actually beat us.
We continue the journey with some truly majestic bridleways by the mileful, tours by the tinful, and points by the truckload. We even get a stone circle and a puncture. Now Steve Jones definitely has some answering to do for this ride. We've cut out quite a few miles just on the road view here, but as I said, I've got a red bar battery showing up, so I'm hoping it's just downhill into Yelverton. Onwards with the road slog. Jonesy's got a load of answering to do with this one. Ah, oh, what? You're already here? How the hell did you manage that? Uh, I am totally spent. That's probably one of the hardest bike rides I've ever been on. Really? I'm pretty spent too. My battery is spent. I've got red bar. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm on well, red. I got two bars left. Two bars left? Yeah, I mean, let's face it. We've been riding for uh, over six hours. You told me we were going to come back <laughs> to this bakery at two o'clock and have a tea and a so, nice cake. I was so gagging for a beautiful coffee and a cherry slice, but... My battery's gone flat. My navigation has gone flat on my phone as well. So it's just like... Gone flat? Yeah. You know, or your navigation wasn't flat in the first place. No. <laughs> so in the end then, the points for myself and Ben. We got many tour spots. We got the sheep, remember? It was a Dartmoor one. And in close proximity, a bridleway, the old duchy, the crock of gold, the stepping stones, the ford crossing, the pony spot, the crazy pool, and of course, the all important stone circle to get a total of 22 points. Chris and Josh, meanwhile, got the sheep sighting, the mine, the stone row, the tour spot, a tin mine, and a bridleway, taking a grand total of nine points. Now, the bailout would have meant disqualification, but because they were already so far behind on points, it really didn't matter that much. A truly ridiculous day out, which really went to show just what 140 mil travel EMTBs are capable of. Tackling this in the summer would throw up questions of whether or not it would be a tamer beast, one that would be easier on the battery, the route finding, and of course the legs. Hell, that river was cold. Sometimes people say, oh, this is a holiday. I mean, do you consider this? Do you consider this a holiday? I mean, it's February. See, told you. Should have brought my wellies. Jesus. Well, am I a cow? <laughs> <laughs>